Hello everybody, welcome back to Level Pixel Level and we're just going to dive a little bit deeper into lattices today and look at some intermediate uh, techniques. All the models from this video coming up are going to be available on Gumroad, so just head over there to the link in the description if you want to download them and see the before and after of this rig we're going to build. So lattices are great um, and they work really well in simple rigs, but lattices really get their true power when you start combining them with other things in Blender. And to be honest, that's when Blender actually gets to become really efficient is when you start combining these tools that kind of seem random, but then when you put them together, do really amazing things. Uh, first thing I just want to talk about is shape keys on lattices are weird. Usually on a mesh object, this key one, if I hit this minus button right here and delete it, everything is fine on my lattice and I click on the basis and I delete that as well. That broke my mesh. And this was a shape key that we made from the first video in the introduction to lattices. Uh, so I'm going to undo that and let's try another way. So there's a little button here down by this arrow and there's a delete all shapes option. Let's try that. Everything seems fine off the top, but if I go to edit mode, again, my mesh is broken. And with lattices, you cannot get back to the base shape. You are stuck with this and you want to go back to the base shape. So I'll flip back to object mode and I'll just undo that. I'm going to show you how to delete all your shape keys. First thing I'm going to do is click on basis. I'm going to click this plus button here and I'm just adding a new blank shape key. What this is going to do is it's almost going to hold my empty shape. So now when I go to key one, I'm going to hit this minus button here to delete it. Under my basis, I'm going to delete that as well. And my key two, I'm going to delete. Now when I go to edit mode, my lattice is in its default location. That's probably a bug. Uh, there might be something wrong that I'm doing. Let me know if you have another alternative to that. Um, but it's been around since 278, 279. Uh, there's probably a way you could delete these with Python code as well to do that automatically for you. Um, but just something to be aware of when you're working with lattices. One last thing with shape keys. If I have shape keys on my lattice, you can no longer adjust the resolution of that lattice. You are locked in. You can adjust the interpolation and you can turn outside on and off, but you cannot adjust the resolution. So moving forward, let's now combine a lattice with a rig. And we're going to get some pretty cool things when we do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the resolution down to two on the UV and the W. And I'm going to go to add armature single bone. So that adds a single bone to the file. I'm going to go to edit mode. And I'm just going to drag this bone down to the bottom of the lattice. And I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to click on the tail of the bone and I'll drag it to the top of the lattice. So I'll just select this and I'm just going to flip to pose mode and set my rotation calculation to X, Z, Y. Now I'm going to go to the bone tab and I'm just going to rename this lattice to form and I'll just flip back to object mode. So lattices are actually kind of interesting in Blender is that they can also take modifiers. So if I come to the modifier tab here, I can actually give a couple of modifiers, not as many as a mesh or a curve, but still a lot of options. For instance, I can give a lattice another lattice. I can give it a mesh to form. I can shrink wrap it. And that's great for actually making like a Lego face with grease pencil. We'll get into that later, but what we're gonna look at today is the armature. So I'm gonna add an armature and the object I'm gonna add is that armature that I built. Now, you can actually shift select on the armature and do control P or command P on a Mac. And you do have some armature deformation options here, but they will not assign weights like mesh. They will not make groups. You can try them. It will parent the lattice and it'll make the modifier for you. But this is where we're going to get into vertex groups. Vertex groups in lattices work a little bit differently than vertex groups in meshes. You have to make them yourself. They won't make themselves through an automatic weighting on the rig. Uh, so I've made that vertex group there just by clicking on that add button. And under the armature, I named that lattice to form. I'm just going to match that name up. So I'm just going to copy it, double click on group and paste it. Now nothing's happened still. We're still with the default shape and object mode, but I'm going to flip to edit mode. And I'm just going to hit A on my keyboard. Now we have a new option here called weight under the vertex groups. I'm going to leave that at one and I'm going to click assign. This assigns that weight from that vertex group to the lattice. Now, since that name is matching this deformed bone, if I go back to object mode and click on my rig, and I go to pose mode and move it around, I'm now moving that lattice. 
But here's the thing. I am moving this lattice in a deformation mode. So the lattice itself, if I go back to object mode, the location is still at 0, 0, 0. So remember from the first video when I told you that lattice location does not affect the mesh, only lattice edit mode affects the mesh. What we're doing essentially in our armature is when we're in pose mode moving that lattice, we're changing its edit mode location. So it's almost a something we're exploiting within the program to allow us to rig this lattice. But there's a lot more you can do with this. Um, so I can grab this bone and I can scale it. I can scale it in. I can do a whole bunch of things with it, just like you would with a normal rig. And that's pretty much as if you just bone parented it, uh, that mesh to this bone. Let's talk about something on bones. I'm going to click on the armature tab. I'm going to flip it from octahedral to B bone. Now, we're not going to get too much into bendy bones today, but bendy bones are awesome in Blender. If you're coming from Maya and you wanted to do this in Maya, it would take much longer, a couple of modifiers and a curve. What bendy bones allow you to do is segment a bone. So I've gone to the bone tab now and I have this option called segments and I can start dialing in these segments. Now, what this essentially does is it turns the bone into a spline. So you can see it affecting the lattice there, right? And there's tons of options here. I'll get more into B-bones in another video. I just want to show you how you combine it with a lattice. So it looks a little weird, but what we can do is since we weighted this lattice 100% to this bone, if I come back to my resolution and I'm going to do it on the V, sorry, I'm going to do it on the W, and I'm just going to bump up that value to about 15. Now, when we do that, we actually lose our vertex group. So watch when you're doing this stuff, make sure you have your vertex groups done and your resolution done before you start adding weights. What I need to do is select everything again and just assign a weight of one again. In the next video, we're gonna look at how to sort of normalize these weights in a more advanced uh, lesson. But for now, we'll just leave it like that. I'll go back to object mode. I'm gonna select on the rig and I'm gonna to go to pose mode. Now watch what happens when I go back to the bone tab and start dialing in those curves. And this is still a very simple setup. So if I turn off X-ray, you can see what's happening. We only have three things in this scene. If you wanted to accomplish this in other software, you would need a ton of pieces to build this. And this is what I'm talking about with Blender. When you start combining these things, you get really cool rigs. But this rig is okay, but it's still kind of tough to handle. You can't really work too much with it. Let's take it to the next step. So I'm going to hit tab. Or actually, I'll just go to edit mode. So I'm just going to click on the top, uh, the tail of the bone here. I'm going to go to armature extrude. And that's going to extrude that bone out. And it's kind of random right now. But if I hit Z on my keyboard, it'll just extrude up. Now, when you extrude a bone in Blender, it makes something called a connected bone. So in the bone tab, if you go to relations, there's an option here called connected. Connected bones work with bendy bones as well. And I'm actually going to do another video more in depth on connected, but when I go to pose mode, because this bone is connected to the one down here, it's a child of that bone, but when I rotate it, I actually affect the bendy bone. And that's a really powerful setting, like when you're able to do a curve like that with just two bones. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to flip the display back to octahedral, and I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to duplicate this bone, I'm going to armature, duplicate, and I'll just hit Z to constrain it. What I want to put is another connected bone down here. So I'm going to select on the head of the bone. I'll do Shift S, cursor to selected. I'll select on the tail of this bone that I moved down here. I'll do Shift S, selection to cursor. Now I'll select on this bone here, our main one. I'll just go to X-ray mode and Shift select on this bottom one here. I'm going to do Control P and I'm going to add a connected bone. Now I'm going to go back to pose mode and with this bone up here, I can rotate it like that. But then when I also rotate the armature, look what it's doing to that lattice. I'm getting that really nice curve there automatically and I'll flip it back to B bone so you can see it. So just from these two bones, I'm getting this really interesting shape. But let's even keep going with it. Let's make this a little bit cooler. I'm going to select this top bone up here and I'm going to go to edit mode. And I'm going to go to Armature, Duplicate. And I'm just going to click Enter because I want it to be in the same spot. I actually want to unparent this bone, so I'm going to go to Armature, Parent, Clear. And I'm just going to clear the parent. 
Now in pose mode, I have a bone stacked up here that isn't going to do anything. In B bones, it's really tough to see this bone right now because they're both stacked up. But if you do Control Alt S, you have the scale option, which allows you to scale a B bone. This is just a visual cue. This is not a deformation action like a scale over here. You can also do this in edit mode. There's a button here for it called bone size. And this tool right here, when you click on it and just click and drag, you can scale that B bones display scale. Now I'm gonna go back to pose mode. And what I'm gonna do is click on this top bone here and I'm gonna add a constraint. I'm gonna add a copy transforms. The target is gonna be the armature. And I'm just gonna click on this top bone and rename it to, I'm just gonna call it control. I'll select back on this bone. I'll go back to the constraint and the bone is gonna be control. So now when I rotate this bone, I'm actually rotating that one. But because it's a connected bone, when I translate it by hitting G, it doesn't move along with it. To do that, I'm gonna do that on this lower bone here. So on this bendy bone, I'm gonna add a stretch to. Target's gonna be the armature and the bone is gonna be the control. So now this top bone here, when I move it around, it's gonna have that stretch too, but it's also controlling the rotation of the bendy bone. So this is a far more advanced lattice setup with these two bones, you have a very interesting stretch squash now. You can probably imagine some other interesting things you can do with a technique like this, just using bendy bones and lattices to get some interesting deformation. Now you could have gotten the same type of deformation on the Suzanne model here, uh, just by using that as an automatic weighting to the rig. But the idea behind the lattice is now we can add on top of this. So say I wanted to add an ear rig and an eye rig and a mouth rig, that can all be separate from my stretch squash that can live in another world so that the two systems aren't conflicting with each other. And speaking of that, in the next video, uh, we're going to try that out. Now, this model is available on my gum road at the beginning of the lesson and the end if you want to try it out. Uh, so head on over there if you want to download it and just play around with this rig. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.